Hello viewers, SuperGT here. How are we all doing today? Now, I've finally returned, and I've returned at a good time. Or is it a bad time? A new weekly race, Group 3 and Monza. There it is, the Cathedral of Chaos. And we're going to see that being proved correct. On my first race, coming into Turn 1, minding my own business, and then we're just going to get shoved out and teleported back in time. Lovely. It's only taken a little more than 22 seconds for these for these guys to be licking their lips at the prospect of dancing with Super GT in the coffin. Okay, so it's to be expected if we're honest. It's Monza, and this is pretty much an ongoing theme on this channel that Monza it just always creates chaos. It pretty much never fails to do that, and that has been true since the Forza days. Since the Gran Turismo day, since whatever day it is, Monza will always mean madness. Especially at that first chicane on lap one. But we must continue and um, see what we can do then from now, the back of the pack. I had a good grid slot there, but it's been almightily ruined very quickly. But now we must resist the urge to rage quit and continue our endeavour here to get back towards the front of the pack. Okay, so this video, roughly 36 minutes long, a little bit less, and you may well have seen that I've been posting slightly less videos and streaming less than normal. I've been trying to take a little bit of a break. I think last few weeks have been quite hectic for me, and uh, it's been quite a lot of pressure to do all these live streams and uh, on all these different games, different sims, and I don't know, I've actually become a bit... Uh, burn out from actually doing that. First world problems, I know. I know, I know. But, but there you go. Uh, so I thought I'd take a little bit more time off. But in return, instead of having... Uh, in, in the case of having less videos, at least this time you'll have a longer video. Uh, so normally they're about, what, 20 minutes, my videos? But this one, you can watch for a good 36 minutes instead. How about that? Nice little trade-off for you. I'm going to go for the move into turn one. Oh, man, I think... I would like to say he moved a little bit late there. I wasn't expecting him to do that. But <laughs> the French guy <laughs> to a place of the head gets a two-second penalty for that move, even though I kind of pushed him into him. Uh, so that was kind of weird. But that guy that I pushed kind of gained three positions out of that. So it was actually a good thing for him in the end. Now, we go past this German. Look on the radar here momentarily. He's just going to swerve left at the last moment. And uh, this is um, another thing you're going to find... In racing in general, when you're in the middle of the pack, things become a little bit more argy-bargy, to give you the technical term. And uh, that is, in the most part, the thing that's going to slow you down quite a lot is the fact that people are going to be fighting. Like, look, this, look at this again, that German go for the move. And a move that was just never going to work. Lesmo 2 just it isn't really a place to overtake unless you've already got completely alongside, alongside before the braking zone. But that wasn't the case there, was it? So it was never going to really work. Into Ascari, back into 12th position now. So we went down to near enough last. And we've now returned, getting closer towards the top 10. And that is definitely possible around here. As um, I say overtaking is not too difficult. Of course, you've got lots of slipstream. But um, we're going to get wiped out once again. This time I don't get teleported back in, back in time. Dirty Raccoon, proving his name to be very true as he comes for a dive out of nowhere. <laughs> and there we go, back to 14. It really is topsy turvy. My race profile is like a yo yo. Dirty Raccoon getting sent off into the gravel to get a little bit more dirty. Didn't really want to do that move, but this guy breaks so early. So we almost went for a big send. But now we're in 13th. Progress a little bit further into the race into this final corner then, Parabolica and uh, Rick MotoGP is going to get bundled out wide, we're going to take advantage of that and take advantage of the lack of momentum for the Spaniard look up the inside here I'm going to block quite late admittedly, but to be honest at this part here you don't really want to be going three abreast like we are and for the third time I'm going to be <laughs> shoved over the curb luckily I don't get teleported again but we're into 11th and I'm going to just try desperately to get away from that group behind. 
I'm into 8th by this point, a couple of people going in for that pit stop. Now you do have to take note of, oh I do get teleported this time. This race is really a disaster but it kind of shows you the, my progression, dirty, oh, I'm back with Dirty Raccoon again. You just can't write this stuff. And um, sometimes I like to show the failure, you know, because I think on YouTube, oh, actually there look, absolutely massive send, it just had to happen. It just absolutely had to, had to happen on this guy. Um, but it's very easy on YouTube, I think, just to show just show the good bits, if there are any, that is. But for me, um, it normally takes a good couple of races to actually get some decent results. Where, you know, this first race I'm just trying to work out what the hell I'm doing. And, and then eventually we'll get there. But I think sometimes it's good to show you the failure, so you can kind of maybe relate to it a little bit more, I don't know. But um, this race obviously not going to plan completely. Uh, we find ourselves here now in 30 as we go on to the hard tyre but um, unfortunately by this point the race is fairly spread out but what I would say is that I did have a fairly good battle with this French guy behind and this was probably the highlight of the race to be honest because for the most part we're getting battered around, getting penalties, getting teleported back in time, all the, th all the things that are not desirable in a race but um, this here was a good little battle and this is exactly what we do want to see so he goes around the outside and to be honest I break dead on time to hit the apex and he breaks dead on time to go around the outside so fair play to him, really good move uh, we go down to 13th and uh, I'm going to tuck back into that slipstream and of course slipstream is so so important around here and we look to the right hand side and the outside of chicane number 2 not normally the best place to be, but uh, Lewis Hamilton make, can make it work, so it can work, I suppose. Not on this occasion, though, he gets a poor exit. I suppose that's what you're going to try and do in these cars instead. Just trying to force them narrow to get them to make a poor exit instead. So we're up the inside into Lesmo 1, we retake our 12th place. I felt as though we could have gained on this guy in 11th if we'd worked together, but I mean, most of this is probably my fault for not, for not cooperating with him. But there you go. With one lap left to go, plus Parabolica. Sitting here in 12th place. It was a good little battle. I did enjoy this one, if I'm honest. Uh, so yeah, everyone using the Nissan GTR. It seems to be the, the car to go to. It's um, It's got really good top speed. It's one of the cars with the best top speeds in, in Group 3. And therefore, at Monza, a track with lots of straights, you want the top speed. Now, I didn't defend this one. I felt like maybe I could just try and run him on the outside but he got into a really good position there and I just sort of had to back out um, I'm not sure that it might have been possible looking back at it to go around the outside but sometimes it's best around here to not be ahead because you get the slingshot in the toe and you can try to get a return move done which we're going to try and do here look to the inside he covers it off and it's not going to happen but again try and force him to go narrow and get a good exit is it going to be possible this time no he does get a bit of a squirm going on on the way out once again he's going to have to go in narrow could we potentially get the move done here looks like we can we're going to slingshot up the inside on the way out and he backs out look at that he just knows that the move's done that's probably quite a sensible thing to do so with half a lap left to go it's not for a good position but it is a good battle and I'm going to have to go to the left hand side here to cover him off and I feel as though he's not going to be able to lunge from there, he could do if he was an absolute maniac but he decides against it and run through Ascari one by one and then he's got one final chance but I did notice that he wasn't that good coming through Ascari most laps and therefore that put him on the back foot coming down towards Parabolica and he did not have the chance to retake this 12th position so what a race that was a bit of um, a bit of well a bit of what how do you describe that it was all over the place all the way to the front all the way to the back and then we end up in the middle good stuff and there are the results you see pretty much everyone using the Nissan GTR some people going for the the Corvette and the Aston Martin DBR9 Let's have a brief look at uh, the replay and see how I met my fate 
down at turn one. And, uh, well, there you go. Uh, just shoved wide, and unfortunately, you know, that's going to happen with the slipstream coming into turn one. Um, it is very easy to misjudge at breaking points, and we get pushed wide here <laughs> for the second time. We were very much a victim, I think, a lot of the time here. And then that guy got shoved wide a bit later. Okay, then, we'll try again. Seventh place this time on the grid. Can we make any progress? Can we have a better race and finish a bit further up this time? If we can stay in the lead group, then I think we're all good. Stay in the slipstream of the guys at the front, and we should be able to have a much better result here. So I'm going to go into turn one, hoping to not get obliterated, and thankfully it hasn't happened. Now through, uh, through the first corner, we've got someone wide on the left-hand side. Didn't quite catch what happened to him, but we're going to gain that position and move up into sixth place. The best position on the circuit, of course. And uh, wind round Curva Grande into turn number one, uh, turn number two, sorry. Well, it's not even turn two, is it? What am I talking about? Chicane number two. Get it right, mate. Come on. So we come through here, clattering over those curbs. Really do have to abuse them quite hard. Spaniard defends as he gets quite slow off the turn. Into Lesmo one, he covers me off in a decent defending manoeuvre. And now we have the Aston Martin DBR9 for company up behind. Now, the vast majority of people are going to go for the Nissan GTR here, as we said, given its top speed, but then there are alternatives. Looking into turn one, look at this almighty gaggle of cars. Couldn't quite get away past, although we did go past one car there. And uh, we have a herd coming through Curva Grande. Looks like the Portuguese driver here going to be quite slow off the corner. Is therefore going to concede a couple of positions. Is he going to concede to me? We'll see. We're going to go in two by two. I'm on the outside here. And we are going to make it work. Okay, so we gain another position. We've gone from seventh up to fourth. And it's only lap two. So this is good progress so far. Doffer up in the lead, pulling away. And he has a decent margin. The thing you want to do here is just break the toe. Once you're out of that sort of one and a half second range, and you're good. This guy having an almost a catastrophic accident on the exit of Lesmo 2 just recovers in time but it does put them side by side coming into this corner uh, Ascari and that's going to give me the opportunity as the Czech guy goes wide I'm going to slam it around the outside and just throw it up the inside at the final part of the Ascari chicane and move therefore up into third place so it looks like things are going a little bit better here as we progress down the back straight into the Parabolica for only the second time, eight laps left to go. And in this race, you have to use the mediums and the hards. I know there was a problem with the game saying they had to use the softs as well, but you couldn't actually use them, and therefore everyone was getting 20 second penalties. I think they patched that very quickly. But um, uh, the Spaniard can go very defensive, fully to the right hand side. I'm going to respect that and go to the left. Are we going to be able to go around the outside completely into turn one? Obviously, having to break a tiny bit earlier to counter the. Um, the extra speed from the slipstream. We do get a, a bit of a tap from behind. And unfortunately, we couldn't quite move up into second. But uh, the race isn't over yet, so we've got plenty of time left to go. So we're going to have to just regroup, stay behind him, and see if we can go for a later move. And this penalty here, this is an example of a race changing penalty. I just got a little bit too greedy at that chicane. And you see there, the group behind was more than slipstream range away. And that mistake, unfortunately, as you can see, has put me right back in trouble. If, if I didn't make that mistake, I would have been up there and we would have been clear up in second and third and pulling away quite nicely away from the group. But you make that one mistake and it redefines your race completely. So now I'm back here in the group and there's a big threat from behind. Three cars immediately behind. But we're going to go for the car in front and try to retake this podium spot, breaking just before the 150. Normally, without the slipstream, you break dead on the 150 board, and um, in the slipstream, you want to break just before. There's sort of a change in colour of the tarmac going into that first chicane, uh, just before the 150 board, and if you're in the slipstream, you want to kind of break there. Depends on your car, though, of course. Uh, that's for the Nissan. So I nudge uh, Edu Joy here, just to kind of say, look, let's work together. He does the flash, and I just get completely distracted, and I will say, I'll hold my hands up and say that was 100% my fault. 
and I've officially sent him back in time now and um, this is more akin to an episode of Terminator with all these people getting sent back in time but <laughs> another mistake just a really stupid mistake completely my fault just nudged him wide and sent him into the shadow realm but we have to continue um, I didn't get a penalty weirdly enough for that as you come down the back straight side by side I'm on the outside though not the most ideal place to be and uh, on the brakes just before the 100 board he goes very deep and uh, that is not going to work my friend he goes too deep we're going to retake that position and uh, again go for third place now up against the Aston Martin DBR9 seems like a decent car for this track it's got good traction it has um, decent brakes as well it's definitely got better brakes than the Nissan and just looking ahead there, the Spaniard making a mistake. He may well have misjudged his breaking point there coming into the first chicane and he loses a handful of time. Um, so second place is actually well and truly back on again. But it well it was until I got this stupid penalty. The second chicane, man. The second chicane. I think I should um I should uh, create a chicane second chicane survivors group or Tra traumatized by chicane to a monza group so we can talk about our difficulties for those of you who have also become a victim of the chicane i'm going to go for this uh, fourth place here up the inside into the second chicane can we avoid the penalty it looks like we can just about you just have to get you really have to make the most off the curb but obviously not enough that you get a penalty so it's really a fine balance you have to strike in the race so people pitting, we're going to go in at the end of lap 7. The mediums can actually go quite long. And normally, this is quite the confusing thing about Gran Turismo. Normally, harder tyres you want more laps on. But, in Gran Turismo, it seems like, for the most part, you want to be on the softer tyres as long as you can. Because they're quicker. Now, coming to turn 1, look at this. Three abreast. Look how close that was. I could have kind of blocked that guy off, I suppose. But we didn't, we didn't do that. Just let him go back up ahead bit of argy bargy through the first chicane up into third although we have the dbr9 alongside he's going to have the toe here of the of the spaniard and the dbr9 does lack slightly in top speed and therefore it has a slight weakness around this track up against the gtr um, in the gtr it's much easier to overtake and and defend on the straights because of your top speed the dbr9 is DBR9 is going to slightly struggle on that front, but it, again, it does have good brakes. It does have quite good traction. It is just a bit clunky in the turns, but then again, the GTR is a hefty chunk as well. Um, okay, so a little bit later, lap number nine now. Just two laps left to go, and it came down to this battle between myself and the Spaniard for second. Uh, so we managed to drop the, the Aston a little bit and uh, forced to the outside. Is it going to be possible? I haven't really pulled that move off. It is definitely possible. I mean, that Frenchman did it to me in the previous race. You have to be quite committed on the brakes, but it's very easy to go a little bit too deep and um, get teleported. Theme of the race. I mean, drinking game. If anyone wants to play the drinking game on this video, I suppose teleported back in time has to be up there. Second chicane. Anytime I mention the second chicane or a penalty, then uh, you're probably paralytic by now if you, if you want to rewind and play along. Uh, through the second chicane and there we go again no penalty this time it looked like um, the Spaniard was right on the edge of what was allowed so fair play to him to getting it dead right and uh, coming up towards Parabolica for the penultimate time looking for the move we're not really looking for that move we're just trying to put him off and on the exit he, he holds it narrow he knows that I was in a good position there but we're going to have to sort of tuck in and go for a move up the main straight. This is going to be one of our best opportunities to get past. Peel over to the left-hand side. Can I finally get this outside overtake done? You see there, I am just ahead, braking just before the 150 on the change of tarmac. And there we go. We got cleanly ahead before the apex. And we move up into second. First place is long gone by this point. Um, so it really is a fight for second. Chicken behind, is he close enough to go for that move? I don't think so, so I'm not going to defend. And uh, just take the corner as you should, there we go. Making the most of the track limits, the curb on the exit as well. Two Lesmos, I'm going to whip it forward here. 
this is the important part. Is he close enough to go for this move? Now, in the previous race, I did defend here. He is very close. I decided at the last moment that he isn't close enough. But, to be honest, I don't think he was. There was contact there, and I was forced very wide, and I couldn't quite recover from, from that. And uh, he goes up into second. Is there going to be a chance to recover, though? I don't think there is, as he swe uh, sweeves? Swerves or weaves? Sweeves, new word for you there. As um, He's going to be really close up to the line here. Going to tuck into that toe. The, the, the start-finish line is quite soon on the straight, though. And it's not quite going to be enough as we finish third. Still, though, a decent result. A bit disappointing to lose it so late in the race like that. But there you go. We move up four positions. So not too bad. We're going to go with the DBR9 now. And my main weapon with this here is just simply how bright it is. I mean, look at that. That is intense. Anyone looking in the rearview mirror at this car is going to be blinded. There's just no question about it. And therefore, that's going to be my main weapon of choice for this race, the blinding tactic. Look at this almighty gaggle. I mean, to turn one. Just look at this Italian, right? He starts in seventh behind me. And he just somehow gets the right line. And he moves all the way up into third. Four positions in one go. Sometimes you just look back and think, damn, I wish I'd just done what he did. And uh, move up so many positions. There's a bit of bowling going on here. Or look more like snooker, to be honest. And um, Manny Rodri getting spun around. I'm getting a one-second penalty for that. For some reason. Okay. I'll, pff, whatever you say, chaps. A little bit later in the race. Um, we're going to go quickly through this race. Uh, we'll go into the pit stop at the end of lap number six. And we're fighting now for fifth place. You see here, look, I have the slipstream. I have the advantage. But the DBR9 can't quite get the speed. And look at the radar here. The guy trying to make it three abreast, which isn't the smartest decision. As the, the main straight kind of thins out as you come towards the, the corner here. This guy gets a three second penalty. Serves it a bit later, and we move up into fifth, and um, we're just holding on for dear life. This car doesn't turn too well coming out of corners. That is the one thing I would say about it. So coming out of that final corner parabolic, it's quite difficult to get it to really turn. Uh, so we get overtaken there. We're going to try to retake the position, and this is kind of a good example of how good this car is on the brakes. You do just have that sort of 10 meters advantage on the Nissan. Therefore, if you're alongside them, someone in Nissan, you can just go balls out and break that 10 metres later. And that was enough to secure the fifth position. So not too bad. This car has potential. It really just depends on the race. It just depends on the luck of the race. Are you going to get a penalty at the wrong time? Or are you going to get sent to the Shadow Realm, etc, etc? It's always likely at Monza. Now, uh, when, all, when all else fails... You log in to your second account, uh, R4M Shadow GT, and start from the back and see see what's what from the back of the pack. Now, the strategy from the back of the pack is slightly different, and the strategy is to go onto the hard tyre and swap over to the medium. Now, why might you do that? Well, let me tell you, because... Uh, oh, that guy's just going to get bundled wide. So we started 20th here, and already we've gained four positions. <laughs> kind of just testament to the chaos of Turn 1 at Monza. You can always gain yourself a hand from the positions there. Okay, so why might you go on to the hard tyres at the beginning? Well, let me tell you, because on medium, you kind of, um, you're kind of wasting your good tyres stuck in traffic. You see here, look, I'm stuck with loads of cars in front, and there's not much chance of overtaking. So I might as well use my, my worst tyres right now. Just tag along in the slipstream. And then go go for the pit stop and get onto the good tyres. And um, you can actually avoid a lot of the trouble. Because I was just trying to work out what is the key to success around Ponza. What is it you have to do? Because in the middle of the pack you lose so much time fighting. Honestly. It really is quite ridiculous. I mean in, in the previous race you could see that. The guy in the lead won by like 10 seconds at the end. Purely because he had clean air, he had he had no one to worry about, no one to defend against, and therefore he could just take the optimum line every lap. But 
whereas all the people behind are just fighting each other. Knocking seven shades of... I was going to say a bad word there. Knocking 50 shades of grey out of each other and um, losing plenty of time in the process. So here, we're just going to tag along with the hard tyre, pit after lap. I mean, you could go in at the end of the first lap if you really wanted. I think the medium tyre can actually last quite long in this race. It really just depends on the, the, the tyre multiplier they use. We're going to be inside here. We're going to go for the movie brakes quite early, actually. Uh, so we're going to get that move done. Ros will get sent back in time, and I'm going to get sent back in time. Once again, it just seems I can get no luck. The Ghanaian pool bearers, once again, looking looking on, licking their lips at the prospect of uh, carrying Super GT. Um, so, we move all the way back, and it just seems like I just could not get cut some slack here at all. <laughs> Every five minutes, we're just going to get sent back. By this point, I'm, I'm in the year 2000 BC. I've been sent back that many times. It really is quite a horrific state of affairs. But it is testament, once again, to Monza Turn 1. And why is Monza Turn 1 so bad? This little area here. What is so bad about it? Well, let me tell you. It's because you've you've basically got the highest speed section into a very low speed section. It's quite simple. That's basically all the logic behind it. You've got a very big braking zone. High speed into very low speed. People misjudge it. And if you misjudge that by even five meters, then it really gets exponentially extrapolated and therefore any accident is going to be 10 times bigger. But there you go. We get sent back all the way to the back temporarily. Now we get rid of the hard tires. Now I'm on fresh mediums. These guys here are on, well, three lap old mediums now. And therefore they're going to be slightly slower than I am. This is the point of the race where I am going to be the quickest, at, the, at my personal quickest, probably the quickest in the race because of the state of my tyres. And this is therefore where you have to make up all the time in this strategy. This is where you have to make it work. And therefore I want to make quick work of these people. I don't want to be losing time here fighting. And if he saw any sense, he would not defend because I'm about to carry it. Well, there we go. That wasn't a defence at all really. If anything, he just... He completely understood the situation and got completely out of the way. Or he just bottled it, one of the two. Um, but we move up into 17. Now we've got to put in a good couple of laps here to just, to just really hammer home our advantage on the tyres. And by the end of lap 6, you can see that we're beginning to do that. We're still in 16th. So you can see it really takes time for this strategy to bear any fruit. But eventually it does. And now, by this point, I'm in the toe which is good news. I'm just going to start gaining free time with zero effort. And um, the thing I learned in the first race, of course, once you're into that toe, you have to start re-judging your braking points, obviously. Coming into Lesmo 1. Uh, we're going to have an almighty gaggle here. Two guys getting slowed down. Okay, thank you very much. And I'll be honest, I've murdered him fully there, but in my defence, I would say brake too early. In his defence, he would say, I killed him. Um, so that one will get taken to the stewards' room, although the stewards have deemed that to be fair game with no penalty. <laughs> so we continue. We're not going to worry. Don't let that affect you. So we're going to continue here in 13th. Now, this is where people are going to start pitting at the end of lap 6. In fact, the leader does go in. And we're going to have a couple of these guys up in front going into the pit lane. And they're going to be going from the medium onto the hard tyre. And we're going to see if my my work throughout the course of this race so far, or at least since I've pitted, is it going to bear fruit? We're going to see right now. So people going into the pit lane. This Spaniard ahead uh, deciding not to. Uh, we're going to go up his inside here into turn one. We're into the top ten now. And that is pretty good news. Up the inside, we, we judge it quite nicely, clip the apex and get our ninth position. And this, this has worked out to perfection, just inside the toe of the car ahead. So that's kind of worked out quite nicely. It's those little things that you want in your favour. As you can see here, courtesy of the toe and the fact that Edu here is just trying to get used to the hard tyres, just warming them up. We managed to catch him up on uh, this lap and get straight onto the back of it quite quickly. 
And this kind of shows you, I'm on um, sort of four lap old mediums, but he's on fresh hards, but um, the medium is still quicker at this point in the race. It kind of just shows you that the medium you do want to be on quite a long time in this race. You don't want to be on the hard tyre too long, two or three laps at most is all you need really. Into turn one, we get the job done. And once again, this is turning out to be really good. We go for that move. Once again, we're in the toe of the cars ahead, which is also a massive bonus. So once you're on the front foot in a race, once you get onto that front foot, it really helps because it just seems as though things just keep going away when you're attacking, when you're going, when you're going forward, when you're making progress, when things are going well, when you're on the right strategy, things just really do just keep going in your favour. And that's exactly what's happening right now. And, uh, you know, at the first sort of quarter of this race, it was all going horrifically wrong and not one thing was going my way. But then you'd be patient and eventually you'll get the reward. And that's exactly what's happening here. As uh, not quite gaining on this lap here, but um, it is a group of three up ahead. And therefore, there's always a chance to, to get some time gained over these guys as they will be or they are going to start fighting each other through Ascari rather planted through there this is again a hefty chunk of a car weighing approximately twice that of the moon and uh, that does give you quite a lot of grip quite a lot of mechanical grip through those chicanes and um, into the final call look at that late on the brakes the medium tyre is still proving to be fairly good even on this amount of laps uh, Roswald, they're going to tuck into the pit lane, so we're going to gain one position. But look at this, guys. The Mustang and the Nissan, and this is the effect of the slipstream. Look at that. Just going to slingshot past up the inside and move straight up into fourth place. Make sure we do not misjudge this breaking point. The car's behind a three abreast. We've judged it dead right. And by this point, we're starting to really get a good feel for exactly where we need to break. When in the tow, when not in the tow. And we move up into fifth, and we've got Edu there following me through. As we both gained two positions on that straight, or three if you include the uh, uh, Roswell going to the pit lane as well. Uh, lap nine, we're going to defend our position here. Uh, I think at this point we can afford to kind of just not really, we're not going to move forward anymore, I don't think. Random lagging car out of nowhere. I think that kind of made uh, the guys behind lose a bit of time. I'm not sure what was going on there. An almighty lag fest as um, we gain a bit of time over the guys behind. Not enough though, because I don't have any assistance from the front, and therefore I'm going to be a sitting duck here as we come up the main straight for pretty much the final time. Well, going into turn one for the final time, and it's going to be a, st uh, a straight fight, a direct battle between myself and Edu, who's just poking himself into the screen on the left hand side. He's got fully alongside. And I couldn't quite fight that. I mean, I was just on the limit of the brakes there. Couldn't really break any later. I don't think I could have defended that one. So you just have to accept you're going to lose the position. But I do not want to accept finishing in sixth place. As good as that would be from 20th, plus I got sent back in time again in this race as well. I mean, I could have easily be, I could be up in third or fourth right now if not for that. Uh, getting shoved wide. I lost a good three or four seconds at least from that incident. Um, but here we find ourselves in fifth and it just shows you the thing I've really summarised from this race is the fact that when, you, when you're when you on the hard tyre at the start going onto the medium you, you gain a lot of time from not fighting. It really does pay dividends later. Eddie getting a one second he's going to lose time serving his penalty. A bit of a shame for him. He was the guy I shoved wide a bit later. We had a good battle here, though, on, on this race uh, into Ascari for the final time. And it's just really a case of making sure we get a good line through here so that the Mustang behind doesn't get too close and have an opportunity into the final corner of the race. And you see there, the gap is fairly big. And therefore, we're going to be safe as long as we don't do anything really stupid. At this point in the race, just breaking before the 100 board. Actually, just after, I'd say. Maybe a little bit after. Trail breaking it in. And you're good. Jobs are good, and mate. But there you go, guys. A nice lengthy video for you. Um, well done on making it this far. And I do applaud you. Thank you. You are you are obviously a hardcore Super TT fan if you've made it this far. You, you're definitely loving the content. And I do apologise for the lack of it recently. 
but um, I'm going to try to get back into the swing of things now. But um, that is all for me. Um, I, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you made it this far, you probably did. Maybe consider subscribing if you're new and drop a like if you did enjoy. But that is all for me. Take care out there, everyone. Uh, have a nice day. Stay safe. And I shall see you all very soon. Until the next one, goodbye. We'll